My name is Peter Joseph. I live in Brooklyn, New York. I'm 31 years old. I am an independent filmmaker and I suppose the de facto founder of an organization called the Zeitgeist Movement. As far as my background, I was born to what I consider to be a middle class family. My father was, uh, is now a retired postal employee and my mother is a retired child protective services employee. In fact, uh, a lot of my social dispositions on society I think might come from the experiences I had listening to the stories coming from my mother. I started getting interested in music I think at about eight or nine. I seemed to fall into a love of percussion and drums and rhythm. I was very lucky to be accepted to a school in North Carolina, an art school and a university, which allowed me to grow up in a very different upbringing than I think most people grow up into in a, you know, in a rural town in a, a place in the south such as North Carolina. And I was exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different interests, a lot of things that you wouldn't find in a typical high school, say, in the south. I was exposed to a large variety of people and artistic and creative people specifically, which I think imprinted on me, so to speak, and I continue those trends today. People say to me, um, well, you know, you work with this social organization, but yet you're just a musician, you know, just a musician. There's the credentialism tendency that comes up a lot with anyone that talks about the issues that we talk about in the movement or that have been talked about in the films, and uh, we can talk about that a little bit later as well. But what I'd like to say is that I look at music now as a form of meditation. It's something as an outlet. It maintains my balance. So I continue to practice in a very personal sense. It's not that I go out and perform that much anymore. I don't have time to anymore. After my second year of college, I dropped out, realizing that the debt that I was accruing was absolutely not worth it. Even then, I knew there was something wrong with going to school, getting a ridiculous amount of debt, eighty to hundred thousand dollars, and then being thrown into the workforce automatically in a position of indentured servitude. If you were automatically having to give yourself to the system because you're already in so much debt. Once music became difficult for me to pursue as a career choice, I started to get into video and editing and I got a job in New York and many jobs in New York doing various freelance video editing, shooting, whatever related to video or film work. We're going to this question of bringing about that total revolution in what is. One must have an extraordinary sense of awareness. You want to be aware of what you do. I always had a problem with people telling me what to do in the labor force, and I did not like advertising, obviously. I did not like the nonsensical manipulation of people's perceptions so corporations can sell their crap. So I began to pursue work in the financial arena. I began to do day trading, which uh, pattern trading, I was moderately successful. I never had a big capital base, which you really do have to have. And, uh, but I, I got some, pulled some change out of the market, and I continued to do it on and off for many, many years. I don't do it anymore because I despise the market system. The way I justified this was it was the only job I could come up with that didn't have a boss or a client. So it represented freedom to me. Granted, trading the stock market has absolutely no social relevance. It contributes nothing to society. You could blow up Wall Street tomorrow and it wouldn't make a damn difference to anything in regard to the natural order of affairs on this planet. So at that stage in my life, I just wanted a way out. I wanted to not have to deal with being a slave to the corporate system anymore. That's when I started first investigating economics. So I had been stuck in the corporate reality and I just wanted to do something for myself to make myself feel better about, about a world that's going to shit, essentially. A world that's being dominated by finance. A world that's sick and distorted through religious processes. Financial oligarchs. Um, it was just an expression. It was, in fact, a very angry with solemn expression. 
I never expected it to turn out to be what it was at all. After it was over, I just found myself in a little bit more debt. <laughs> And I took the work, which, by the way, I had no clearance for. I didn't clear any of the aspects with it. But since the internet is what it is, I tossed it up online to see what would happen. Maybe some people would like it, they download it, I get some feedback, whatever. What happened completely blew my mind. I posted it on one website, and from there a chain reaction occurred. And I, it's pretty much all history from that point on. I couldn't even tell you how it unfolded. All I know is that. I got wind of the fact that it was getting a tremendous amount of hits and talked about it a lot, so I built a website for it, zeitgeistmovie.com, and I just had it up there for free, and then I realized that people wanted it on DVD. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should try to do that. So I was forced into a very difficult position of getting clearance from all the participants involved, which was very difficult, by the way, because everyone saw dollar signs, because it's an internet film that's getting millions of views. So I had to pay out a lot of money to a set number of people to get it going, but there were also people that were just happy to see this information get out there and didn't have any problems with me doing a, what I call a non-commercial distribution, a $5 DVD um, for it to be released in some capacity. Uh, from there, I got an email from an organization called the Artivist Film Festival, and to my uh, amazement, they wanted to show the film in their festival, um, which was a packed audience, sold out audience. I, this, at this stage, it was still only bewildering to me. Uh, this was the same organization, of course, that showed Zeitgeist Addendum the next year. So that's uh, a general rundown of what happened. I could have just made Zeitgeist Addendum like other socially conscious filmmakers do, in the sense that I could have just said, oh, well, here's a bunch of stuff, here's a bunch of problems, hey, here's some possible solutions, take what you will with it and uh, just roll with it and see what happens. Uh, I really was on the fence about putting, at the very end, join the movement, www.thezeitgeistmovement.com. Join the movement, www.thezeitgeistmovement.com. I knew that the moment that it became something more than just a film phenomenon, that my life would likely change dramatically, which it has. Zeitgeist Addendum was sparked out of people emailing me saying, well, what do we do about all of these cultural problems? What do we do about a corrupt banking system? What do we do about people that are locked into establishment social programs, if you will, I consider the trains of thought and mind to be a program. I consider society itself to be a program that's running. Uh, and the programming locks people into a specific frame of reference. Um, how do we deal with these issues? How do we do? What do we do? And uh, Zeitgeist Addendum was an attempt at answering that question. After Zeitgeist 1 was released, um, it got into the hands of Jacques and Roxanne. And after reading Jacques' book, which they sent me, I realized that this was really important information. I realized that even I was backwards on a lot of issues that uh, needed to be corrected. And in order to get society in line, we have to think about the fundamental problems. This was something that I was attempting to do in part. I had a notion of, but it wasn't until I met Jacques Fresco that the lens became focused. It was like all these things that I sort of had an inkling of, Jock's experience, life experience, what he had talked about for song, just focused me in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. So I made a whole section with him in Zeitgeist Addendum, and uh, that's how it took off. If you look back at the history of anyone that has chosen to challenge the establishment, uh, it's a very dark history. There are a great number of people out there that know that something is wrong but they do not understand the source of that wrongness because they are in the box of indoctrination. Socrates. Socrates never speculated on the slavery that was existing during his time. That was normality to him. This goes with every type of political philosopher that's ever existed, whether it's Karl Marx, whether it's Plato, uh, they're all locked into an established paradigm and their thought processes can only go so far. And this includes probably myself. People are locked into a box. They see the box around them. They see the leaks and the holes and the cracks and they go up to the cracks and they try to fix them. They try to patch the holes. 
but they don't stop to think that maybe there's something wrong with the box itself. Maybe the integrity of the box that they exist in is inherently invalid, it's inherently void. The economic system that we live in is a parasitic paradigm that is only going to lead to self-destruction. But people don't see that. So if you attack the economic system for what it actually is, everyone's feathers go up. Everyone says, well, wait a minute, this is the world we all live. We live in a profit-based, labor-for-income world, cyclical consumption. This is what we're used to. We understand we have division of classes. You know, they throw in human nature. They throw in everything that will try to make it seem like it's a part of the natural order of reality when it, in fact, is not. Um, if I was to summarize the, um, the attacks that typically happen towards myself and the people I work with, the first one would be credentialism. Credentialism is an annotation for the priesthood of those in the know. Now, bear in mind, this is a gradient of relevance. Obviously, I'm not going to go to a doctor, if I can help it, that has absolutely no credentials in the surgery that I might need performed. They require instruction and experience to do so. But when it comes to the other side of the spectrum, when it comes to the simple analysis of information, when it comes to the analysis of history, when it comes to economics, because it is a contrived system, has no basis in anything else in general operation. It's not based on laws of physics. It's not based on any aspect of scientific law that has any relationship to planetary operation then suddenly it becomes very relevant to speculate as to what these things actually mean to society. It's a double-edged sword when you get a master's, bachelor's, PhD in a particular medium because think about what you're actually doing. You're going through a curriculum that's been completely established for you by the institutions that have existed prior. When it comes to social things and a great deal of subjective variance, uh, you lose objectivity in that sense because you're literally indoctrinated into the beliefs that are presented. To get a degree in economics, which is probably the most wasteful thing you could possibly do, is to be completely indoctrinated into the idea that what you're studying is actually a science and actually has some type of relevance to anything. So when I get emails from PhDs in economics that try to debunk the aspects that we talk about, it becomes quite clear to me that the reason they have such an objection is really an emotional one. It isn't an objective aspect. They have culminated an identity to themselves because of their belief system. And for me to take that away from them, to debunk their ideas about economics, is to take away their identity. It's easy to point out that some of the greatest minds that have contributed some of the most powerful inventions to our world have come from non-establishment institutions, have worked on their own, they've done their own study, they've guided their own direction of information. They didn't just sit in a classroom and take in the road information, do the step-by-step -step processes as oriented by the establishment, and then grab their diploma and degree, and hey, now I'm an expert in a given field. Uh, the most tremendous minds, the most tremendous contributions comes from those, from those that are outside of the box. I don't even need to give examples of that to make that known.